Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Learn Lightroom CC, also known as Lightroom in the Cloud. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use split toning in Lightroom CC. Split toning allows you to give your image kind of a color tint, and more specifically, you could give the highlights one color and give the shadows a different color. And it's relatively easy to use, but it is kind of hidden in Lightroom CC. We're going to work on this image here. And to find it, it's under Effects. So open up the Effects tab. And then to the right of Effects, you'll see this little square there. Click on that. And that opens up split toning. And you see that split toning is kind of dominated by this color patch right in the middle. And you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, we have this, a circle. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have another circle. The way you use split toning in Lightroom CC is you simply grab one of those circles and push it over a color. Now, this far left-hand circle represents the shadows. So when I grab that and I drag it over a color, we're going to start putting that color in the shadows. So you could see we could go from these warm to cooler colors going left to right. And the further up we are in this square, the more saturation that color will be, or the more saturated that color will be. The further down we go, the less saturated that color will be. So you could tint your shadows, and then you could go over here and grab this other circle, which represents the highlights, and you could drag that over and tint the highlights really very easy to use. Now, most often we'd like to use split toning to give our image a specific kind of look, something different, or we'd like to give it a look that represents um, maybe an old type of film that was used, you know, in the 60s or 70s. And very easy to do. Usually with film, blacks weren't really perfectly black they tended to be a little cooler, a little more blue or purple. So what you would do is you would go to the shadows circle and you would move that over a blue color. And what I recommend you do is when you're starting to move something over the color, go way up at the top so you're getting full saturation. That'll help you better see the actual color you're dialing in. Similarly, with old film, you would go to the highlights and a lot of times those wouldn't be, wouldn't be perfectly white. They'd be a little bit yellow. So you take that and you'd go over to a hue that represents yellow. So you could just go, and again, I recommend that you stay near the top of this uh, color swatch so that you could best see the color you're dialing in. Now, once you're satisfied that you have the exact hue you want for the shadows and the hue you want for the uh, shadow or highlights, then you could come in and readjust the saturation. One recommendation I have for you to make it easy to adjust saturation is that is once you have your hue set is hold the alt or option key in. It's alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac. And when you do that, you'll notice that this vertical line appears. That means I can't drag this circle left or right. I only could go up or down. So I could reduce the saturation. And in, in this case, the highlights to something more acceptable. Similarly, I could go over to where it's, uh, the shadow circle is, hold in that Alt or Option key again for that and pull that down. So it gives it more of the look I want, something a little more subtle. I don't want it to be really super, I guess, uh, old film look. I don't want it to look like the film was in an attic for a year. I just want that slight kind of film look. So it's very easy to do. Now you'll notice up here, there's a slider. This slider is the balance between the shadows and the highlights. Do you want the highlight color to dominate. If you do, move this slider to the right and you'll see that the yellow now starts to dominate the frame. If I want the shadow color to dominate, move it to the left. Now you'll see that bluish color is more dominating the image. So you could uh, kind of 
dial in the exact balance you want between that highlight tone and the shadow tone. Now, to reset the slider, just simply double click right on it. If you'd like to reset the entire split toning panel, hold the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC option. If you have a Mac, and you'll see it says right here, Reset Split Toning. Just click on that and you'll reset it. Now, another thing you could reset one of these if you have, let's say, the shadows on something and you want to reset it, just double click right on the square right there and that will reset, in that case, shadows. Similarly, to reset highlights, double click that. Now, I mentioned if you have a hue set that you like um, for your color, whatever, and you'd like to uh, keep the hue but adjust saturation, hold that Alt or Option key in to do that. If, on the other hand, for some reason you have a saturation set and you don't want to move the saturation but you want to adjust the hue, hold the Command or Control key in. Command if you have a Mac, Control if you have a PC. When you do that, you'll notice the horizontal line appears and you'll be staying on that horizontal line so your saturation won't move but you'll be able to adjust the hue similarly you could do that for for that as well just click between highlights and shadows now the other thing that um, we often use split toning for is to get a sepia tone to our image and i'll just tell you real quick how to do that um, those of you familiar, sepia is kind of like the, the reddish brown kind of look uh, to your image. And typically what you'd like to do is take your highlights and put it somewhere with the hue around 40. Now, you could come in here and just drag this around and try to get it on 40. Or you could just make sure that that highlight circle is selected. Then go down right where it says you and you could just type on your keyboard 40 right there and get 40 set that way then go to your shadows and you'd usually like your shadows around 25 so you could just come in there and put the hue at 25. then you could come in and readjust saturation you could just dial in the saturation or you know put a saturation in here you know something like that or you could just again hold the control or command or i'm sorry the alter option key in it's alt if you have pc option if you have a mac to adjust your saturation more specifically to give a sepia tone to your image now one thing i'd like to encourage you to do is don't uh, just use split toning on a color image uh, split toning is very effective on a black and white image so i'll convert this image to black and white and again i could come in and do that kind of maybe that film look uh, to the image. I'll take highlights and I'll put it on a more yellowish uh, tone and I'll take shadows and I'll put that on more of a, a bluish tone. And then I'll hold the Alter Option key in and I'll reduce the saturation of each of those to give it more of the effect I want. And you could see, and then to see before or after, click on this little on off switch there's before and there's after before after so split toning is a pretty interesting um, feature of Lightroom in general and Lightroom CC specifically it allows you to really come in and give your image a really kind of cool look uh, something different so experiment with it see if you uh, find something you like and who knows maybe you'll stumble upon a style that's really fits your work and works for you and makes your work distinctive. Thank you everyone for watching my video series, Learn Lightroom CC. If you could do me a favor and like and share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate that as well. Also, in the description below this video will be a link to my website. Come visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find all kinds of free photography how-to articles and videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.